The Fed announcing a historic change to its monetary policy today, adopt, adopting an average inflation target that would allow inflation to run higher than normal for some time. That boosted hopes that the Fed will keep rates lower for longer. Take a look at the market reaction. Stocks moving higher today with the S&P 500 closing at another record high. The Dow briefly going positive for the year. The yield curve also steepening with the 10-year yield going well above 0.7 percent. Let's get more reaction to the Fed's big policy shift. Joining us now is Jim Bianco, president of Bianco research. Jim, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Um, so the rally continues. This is a green light for the markets, right? Yeah, it, it well, it is a, it isn't a red light for the markets. Let's put it that way. What the Fed announced today is what we, they said out loud what we've always known. That is specifically that employment matters more than inflation in their dual mandate. If they don't believe that we're at full employment, they'll let inflation run a little bit hotter than they would normally. That's where that inflation number comes in, because employment takes the rule. And they added a third mandate, which is financial stability. But we always knew that that was the case as well, too. The, finally, the other big thing that the Fed did was they kind of took away a lot of the mechanical rules. So out is the Taylor rule, out is the Phillips curve, in is more human judgment at the Fed as to where they should be moving rates. Bottom line is they're not going to be moving rates for any time for the next couple of years. And yeah, it should be supportive of the market. But we kind of knew that yesterday as well, too. So they just said out loud what we already knew. Well, Dave, Jim, it's, it's clear that obviously uh, Chairman Powell doesn't buy two by fours at Home Depot or go grocery shopping because you know, we talk about lumber prices now for the last couple of months. And if you've gone to the supermarket recently, you've seen it. I mean, there is inflation out there. They just choose not to acknowledge it. So is, just, is this them probably seeing inflation's right around the corner and once again moving the goalpost? And to that end, is this market just on cruise control? Yeah, I mean, you're right about the inflation argument. You know, my, I think we're going to see inflation return, probably not until next year because there's a little bit too much slack in the economy right now. They seem to be more focused on employment. But, yeah, if they let the inflation numbers run too much, then you'll see it in interest rates. Interest rates will start to shoot up a lot. Uh, and then we'll be into a situation like we were in the fourth quarter of 2018. Remember, the Fed will put the balance sheet on automatic pilot was the word they used, and they were going to reduce the balance sheet. And then the market didn't like it. And then two weeks later, they dumped the whole thing and said, no, we'll be patient and flexible. They run that risk again as well, too. If they're going to ignore inflation too much, and you're right, if lumber prices keep moving up and gold prices keep moving up and we get inflation, then the Fed might be forced at some point to say, OK, forget that. We'll now respond to inflation because the markets don't like it. So that's the, the immediate risk I see that they can have with this policy should inflation return. Jim, it's Karen. I was just looking yesterday at the um the real tenure, which is negative versus the tenure, the uh, the nominal price. So we have inflation there, and it's been moving up very steadily since March to about 174. Where do you think we know it's over two that the Fed will let infl inflation run? But how far over two do you think they would let it go before they felt that they had to do something? You know, that's an interesting question because let's say they let it go to two and a half. The last time core inflation, because PCE is their measure, was two and a half, was 28 years ago. If they let it run the two and three eighths, and I know that most people think that this is like economists just playing with rounding errors, we haven't seen those numbers in 14 years. So probably around two and three eighths to two and a half is the upper end of where they would go. But that's a 14 to a 28 year high in the market. And that's why I said the risk is the market could see man, we're at a 14-year high in inflation if we're only at two and three-eighths. And if we continue to move higher from there, they'll start to really worry that things can get out of hand. And that's why it's risky for them to let inflation run that hot. So seeing where the markets are right now, Jim, and, and expecting inflation to rise sooner rather than later in terms of, of the market expectation, which is almost never at this point, um, which sectors do you think do the best under this sort of scenario? Because as we see interest rates creep higher, it may not be technology um, that should be necessarily the beneficiary uh, of this next phase of the Fed. 
Yeah, if if, infl if inflation is going to return and, and that's going to be manifested itself in, in higher interest rates, then basic materials, the cyclicals, things that would re do better in a, in a stronger nominal growth economy, nominal meaning real growth and inflation together, those would probably be the sectors that would benefit from it. You're right that technology is more about real growth and financials, they're, they'll, they could maybe benefit from a steeper yield curve, but higher interest rates would be a kind of a drag on that. And they've got a whole host of other problems as well. So I'd look at like basic materials and, and cyclicals and things that you would expect to do better with just higher levels of growth in the economy. Jim, great to see you. Thank you. Jim Thank Bianco you. of Bianco Research. Steve Grossley, you've sort of been in Jim's camp for a while in terms of which sectors to be in. Yeah, and I think Jim hits it on the head here. I just don't, like today when you heard Powell speak, the things that led were financials, real estate, staples, those led. But if you turn around and you look at the year-to-date performance, you have the XLK ETF for tech, up 34% year-to-date. You look at the XLF, which is the ETF for financials, that's down 18%. So I don't think, to Jim's point, you're going to get long-lasting uh, rotation into where we all think it's going. I do feel like the market's a little toppy here. So I've been a bull, but when you really look at this, uh, you know the, the overview saying things don't grow to the sky, trees don't grow to the sky. I think we're due for that 15% to 20% pullback in the overall market. So I think the market has bit off a little more than it can chew following Powell into this uh, into this hole of never ending upside. Guy, I know you flagged the move in the VIX yesterday, which uh, followed the S&P 500 higher and that continued today. Yeah, it's interesting that yesterday was a B day, right? So I don't have a letter for you today, although I'm sure if you gave me some time, I could think of one. But I thought it was interesting yesterday <laughs> that the VIX sort of held that 21 level, the timid flag. Then today, the reversal in the VIX today, I thought was really something to keep an eye on. I think to Steve's point, uh, this move in the VIX, you know, we might look back a couple weeks from now and say it was that Thursday and at the end of August when the VIX sort of showed its hand. I do think the VIX rallies from here, and I don't think it's coincidental that maybe it happens as we get through both conventions now, and now we have sort of some, some uh, highway until the election. So it, it makes sense in terms of the calendar, uh, the, the situation that Steve just pointed out in terms of a meaningful correction to the downside. All right.